let's look at some properties of uh, hyperbola by which we can uh, visualize the hyperbola how, how it would look like now hyperbola is symmetric with respect to the x and y axis now here x axis is called transverse axis y axis is called conjugate axis now transverse axis meets the hyperbola at let's say a at a comma 0 and let's say a prime at minus a comma 0 and conjugate axis does not meet the hyperbola at all so you have this and it would be something like this so therefore there are only two vertices plus or minus a comma zero which means length would be length of transverse axis be two way now just to make everything uh, uh, keep everything consistent we take two points b zero comma b and b dash 0 comma minus p on the conjugate axis so the length of the conjugate axis would be 2p now hyperbola is also is symmetric with respect to the origin so center is the origin or origin is the center the coordinates of the two foci is plus or minus a e comma zero equation of directrices the x is equal to plus or minus a by e or x plus or minus a by e equal to 0 and the distance between foci is 2 a e and the distance between directrices with 2 by no 2 times a by e okay now let's look at the equation again x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1. Now let's uh, solve it for x. So x square by a square is equal to 1 plus y square by b square and x square is equal to a square 1 plus y square by b square. This basically implies that x square is greater than a square greater than or equal to so therefore the magnitude of x would be greater than or equal to a so which means that the hyperbola cannot lie between x equal to minus a and x equal to a so do you remember we had the graph like this so it can't lie here this is minus a this is a now similarly let's solve for y y square by b square is equal to x square by a square minus 1 now as x let's say x square approaches plus or minus infinity what will happen this infinity divided by anything is infinity if you remove one from that infinity it doesn't make any difference so which means um, y square also approaches infinity now it can't be minus y because it is y square but y approaches plus or minus 
infinity. So on this side it approaches infinity, on this side it approaches infinity, similarly on this side and this side. So in this case this goes towards plus infinity minus infinity plus infinity minus infinity as x goes towards minus infinity and plus infinity. There are two latera recta. The equations are x is equal to plus or minus a end points of LR. End points would be the solution of x is equal to plus or minus a e this is plus or minus and x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1. So let's solve it. Let's substitute a e because it is x square the negative also becomes positive. So a square e square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1. So minus y square by b square is equal to 1 minus e square minus y square is equal to b square 1 minus e square or y square is equal to b square e square minus 1 which is equal to now this part is equal to b square by a square. So y square is equal to b to the power of 4 by a square or y is equal to plus or minus b square by a. And the length of the lateral recta would be b square by a square plus b square by a square to 2b square by a. So basically we are adding the magnitudes. Now end points of LR would be plus or minus a e plus or minus b square by a. Now one of the properties is that the difference of the focal distances of any point in or on the hyperbola is equal to the length of the transverse axis okay now let's let's first draw the diagram this is the y axis let's say this is the directrix or directrices this is our transverse axis Let's say this is this side and this is this side. This is one focus. This is another focus. Let's say this is S. This is S prime. Let's take a point on the curve. Let's say this is P. So we are talking of uh, S prime P minus S P is equal to 2A, which is the length of the transverse axis. So let's take the perpendicular from P. Let's say this is M. Let's say this is M prime. Now we know PM is perpendicular to let's say L1 or L prime. Now let it be L1. Easier to differentiate L1. And P M prime is perpendicular to L2. So let's say this is L2. Now we know SP is equal to E dot PM and we know S prime P is equal to E dot PM prime. Since we are talking of difference, let's subtract S prime P minus SP is equal to E dot PM prime minus e dot pm or we can write it as pm prime minus pm now pm pm prime minus pm is nothing but m m prime we know the distance between 
directrices right so that is 2a by e e gets cancelled and we are left with which is equal to the length of transverse axis okay asymptotes a tangent to a curve at infinity so there are two asymptotes x by a plus y by b equal to 0 that is one asymptote and the other asymptote is x by a minus y by b equal to 0 so what are uh, the how, how, do, how do the asymptotes look like uh, you have this transverse axis now you would have a right so this line will get closer and closer to the curve hyperbola but it will not actually touch as it goes towards infinity similarly you will have a curve or oh, sorry line which gets closer and closer to the hyperbola but never touches it now purely from an algebraic point of view we know that if a plus b equal to 0 and a minus b equal to 0 or for that matter anything a plus b even if it is c plus t even if it is c plus t if they are equal then their product also will be equal to 0 right so here also we can combine these two asymptotes so x by a plus y by b times x by a minus y by b equal to 0 and when we actually multiply it we get x square by a square remember a plus b times a minus b is a square minus b square minus y square by b square is equal to 0 don't get confused this is not the equation of the hyperbola because in that case this is going to be 1 here it is 0 now if you do the plotting we will end up with a rectangle right actually this line should go a little bit like this it should go along with if we draw it properly we would end up with the asymptotes passing through the vertices of the rectangle having vertices at plus or minus a comma plus or minus b so the diagonal of this rectangle are the asymptotes if extended extended to infinity plus or minus infinity now the easiest way of drawing this hyperbola is to draw the rectangle okay and then draw the diagonal and extend it indefinitely and now draw the curve the hyperbola make sure you don't touch the this line the diagonals so this is your hyperbola by the way this rectangle is called auxiliary rectangle of the hyperbola we could have any other figure as well we can also have a auxiliary circle now in in this case in case of a hyperbola if a is equal to b in x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1 it is called a equilateral hyperbola asymptotes would be x square by a square minus y square by b square and since a is equal to b we can write this also as a square equal to 0 so x square minus y square is equal to 0 if you take the LCM and then take it to the other side 
so which means x square is equal to y square asymptotes are perpendicular to each other so e for a rectangular hyperbola is equal to square root of 2 the auxiliary rectangle becomes a square transverse and conjugate axis and LR have equal lengths. So, we have looked at so many properties. Let's take an example and figure out all the different aspects of a, of the hyperbola. Let's say we have 4x square minus 4y square equal to 1. This is not the standard form. The coefficients of x and y should be, x square and y square should be 1. So, divided by 4. So, we get x square minus y square is equal to 1 by 4. But this should be 1. So, now divide it by 1 by 4. So, x square by 1 by 4 minus y square by 1 by 4 is equal to 1. Now, y, uh, 1 by 4 can be written as 1 by 2 square minus y square by 1 by 2 square equal to 1. So, now this is in the standard form. So, a square is equal to 1 by 4 or to be more specific 1 by 2 square which means a is equal to 1 by 2 b square is equal to 1 by 2 square which implies b is equal to 1 by 2 now center would be at 0 comma 0 vertices is plus or minus a comma 0 which implies this would be a plus or minus 1 by 2 comma 0 transverse axis length is 2a which means 2 times 1 by 2 which is equal to 1 and the equation of the transverse axis is y equal to 0 similarly conjugate axis length would be 2b so 2 times 1 by 2 which is 1 and the equation of the axis will be x equal to 0. Now, e is going to be square root of 2. Why? Since a equal to b. Foci will be, the coordinates of foci would be plus or minus a e comma 0. Which implies plus or minus a is 1 by 2 e is root 2 comma 0 root 2 by 2 comma 0 okay remember this this root 2 by 2 can be written in different ways right we can rationalize the numerator or we can rationalize the denominator okay now the distance between four side is 2 a e which implies 2 times 1 by 2 times root 2 so root Two. Now, equation of directrices x is equal to plus or minus a by e which is equal to plus or minus 1 by 2 root 2 and this again can be written in many different forms. Now, distance between directrices is 2a by e. So, 2 times 1 by 2 root 2. So, 1 by root 2. Length of LR, lateral recta, is 2B square by A. 2 times B is again 1 by 2. So, B square is 1 by 4 by 1 by 2. So, if we take this 2 down, it will become 1 by 4. So, this and this gets cancelled and we will end up with 1. Now, equations of LR. 
x is equal to plus or minus a equal plus or minus a which is equal to plus or minus root 2 by 2 end points of lr is plus or minus ae and plus or minus b square by a which is plus or minus 1 by root 2 plus or minus 1 by 2 b square is 1 by 4 divided by 1 by 2 is 1 by the asymptotes of this hyperbola okay so we have 4x square plus no, minus 4y square equal to 0. These are the uh, equation of the asymptotes. 4x square minus 4y square equal to 0. Now 4 is common. So x square minus y square equal to 0. And 4 can be taken to the other side where it becomes 0. So that is hyperbola. That's it for today. Bye for now.